Okay guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be taking a look at another piece of test equipment. I've been upgrading my bench here lately and I got a Fluke 45 now. I think this is going to be the last upgrade I do for a little while, but uh, let's actually take a look at the star of today's video, the Fluke 45 multimeter. Okay, so as you can tell, this thing's not brand new, but of course it's not brand new. It's a 30-year-old multimeter. So why am I so excited about a 30-year-old multimeter? Well, truth of the matter is on the back of this thing. We have a serial port out, which means I can connect it to the computer and I can display the reading from this thing on screen while I'm doing videos. So that's the reason why I bought this thing. My old BK Precision really works good enough for what I do, but I wanted to get something that I could display on the screen. So I picked this thing up used off of eBay for a whopping 150 or 160 ish bucks. That's including shipping. Um, so. So let's take a look at everything we got in the package, which includes uh, a couple of banana connectors. Uh, this one didn't actually have this long wire on here, but these kind, you can unscrew it. And I changed the wire out. I needed one that was longer. All right, and then we got our power cable and we got these two PowerMaster probes. Um, the PowerMaster probes are actually a pretty expensive probe. I didn't really realize these were what was coming with it. Uh, this is like uh, to buy this set you're looking at like $75 so that was nice to have that included in this um, it does not have a current calibration on it but these things can be calibrated I don't know if this one will hold the calibration but it I've already tested a little bit it matches good enough for what we do on this channel so now let's actually plug it in and power it up take a look at it there as always with these vacuum fluorescent displays they flicker on the cameras because of refresh rate but it's not actually but it's not actually the screen flickering as all the subscribers of this channel would know i really like vacuum fluorescent displays which uh is why i have a bunch of projects using them so i, I definitely part of what sold me on this thing but the real thing that sold me on this multimeter is we use them where i work uh, and I really like them at work, so I decided I want to get one. So a couple of cool features is that this is a dual display multimeter, which means I can hit second, and then I can hit uh, volts AC, and now I have my DC volts with my AC reading here, which will let me read the ripple. So as you can tell, the second screen is brighter than the first screen. That is because whoever, whoever owned this before me, this was mounted in a rack and it was probably never turned off. So the display is a little worn out on here, but that's really not a big deal because it is not so worn out that I can't read it. Uh, so it doesn't bother me at all, especially for the price I paid for this thing, because, uh, th these can still fetch quite a premium, uh, on eBay. So I, I feel like I got a pretty decent deal on it so i'm not gonna complain you normally don't get these ears on it these are for mounting it on a rack um which this one was obviously mounted on a rack before you normally would have the little foot that kind of twists out on there uh, but this one came with the rack mount which i'm going to take advantage of that rack mount here in a minute last feature i really want to show on here before we tear this thing down is we also can read the frequency too so that that's nice um that's a nice little feature that we can use uh, when working on power supplies and stuff. I think this will only go up to like 100 kilohertz though. So it's not a super high frequency. It, it reads accurately, um, but it does read frequency on there. So it is useful, especially when troubleshooting power supplies. So let's turn this thing off and actually tear it apart and actually open it up and take a look. Okay, so we got this thing opened up. Let's take a quick glance on this. I'm not gonna tear it down much more than this because I'm not an expert on multimeters in the first place. So there's no point in me rambling too much about how this thing works. But I did wanna go into a couple of things. One, we have opto isolation here from, we have the analog conversion done over here and then opto isolation between it and this microcontroller here, uh, which drives the display, but also has the serial chip here, which you can't see because of the wire. Let's see this guy right here. So that's our serial convert our TTL to serial, uh, which is going to come out this cable here go around the back and to our connector in the back. So, we have opto isolation, which means if something goes horribly wrong over here, it's not going to send it out and come out the um, 
hit port and damage your computer. So this is completely isolated. Um, the transformer uh, isolates it from mains earth and we even have this uh, winding that goes in there that takes out any capacitive coupling too. So it's a really well-made uh, transformer for the uh, inside here. Um, this board is a optional board on these for the um, it, it's for this connector here. Um, it's for the IEEE 488 standard, right? Yeah, 488. Um, so that is what uh, this daughter board is here. This blank space over here is for another option. There's an option for a rechargeable battery pack that goes in there. So that way this thing can run off of the batteries. I think it'll run off the battery for like three hours uh, when it's a good battery. Um, and it has a 30 minute warning light that a hey, we're, we're within 30 minutes and it'll still be calibrated even when uh, it'll still match its calibrated readings even in that state. Um, so that, that's kind of the main thing. We also have, uh, we have a big fuse over here, which we can't see on the camera. Let's see. There we go. We got a, a big fuse over here for the 10 amp and the, uh, 100 milliamp. The fuse is actually in here. You can open it up to get it out and take the fuse out of that holder there. So the fuse is changeable from the exterior. While if you blow the 10 amp, you are going to have to open it up to get that out. And so that's really all I want to cover on the um, interior of this thing. I just wanted to give you a quick glance. I want to, one last thing, looking at the date codes on some of these uh, ICs on here, this one was probably manufactured in 1993. So it might actually be older than some of the viewers of this channel. But let's uh, get this thing back together and get it uh, mounted on my workbench. Okay, so it's now mounted here in its permanent home. So just 3D printed some uh, a spacer on this side and then a bracket that I can mount it to on this side. Uh, so that's all what's going on here. Uh, it's plenty stable there. It's not going to fall out. Uh, got it hooked up to the signal generator and I have it here. And then you can see up in the top corner of the screen there kind of what the uh, software will look like. Um, so what you need to be able to connect this to a computer is you just need like a serial USB connector and then a the null modem serial so that way it switches to TX and RX um, to hook up to that. If you have one of these, it's the female version. I think it may already be the null, but I don't know. You just got to make sure your TX and RX is flipped um, so that way you can communicate to it. And then it'll plug right into your Windows 10 computer. And then there is some software that I'm using uh, that you can see up in the corner, which is MD Fluke. Uh, it's somebody else's stuff. You can also hook this thing up into LabVIEW or something like that if you have access to that software, but it's kind of expensive for somebody like me to be using. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and turn this on. So once you do that, you uh, once you have it hooked up to the computer, you need to go to second, you need to first set your baud rate. Uh, to whatever you want it to be and then you need to set the print rate which is like the speed that it prints out so let's just go ahead and set that to two and set it and we should start to get a reading here uh, we can go ahead and play with this so as i turn it up you'll see there we go um, and we can go up pretty high with it so there we go and go in the hundreds place So we can get a cup up to 1.6, I think is really the max. 1.7's not quite making it. We go to 1.8 and now we've dropped down. So yeah, 1.6 megahertz is our maximum reading on there. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, volts DC side of it. So let's get this plugged in with some banana connectors. All right, so there's 24 volts, uh, minus some voltage drop from the cable, but pretty close. All right. So now we're at three, or, okay, it's dropping slowly. There we go, we're at the 3.24 uh, volts. So, yep, reads that just fine. So that's kind of the overview of it. I'll have to play with the settings on OBS for how much, how translucent I want that to be. Probably actually make it 
a lot less translucent than that uh, for actual videos. I'm just now testing it out here in this recording. This is my first time uh, testing the software, like actually measuring something. All I did before recording this was make sure I could turn it on. Um, so yeah, that's uh, really it for setting this thing up. And now we'll get to have a nice voltage measurement there in the uh, top of the screen. It's really amazing to me that this 30 year old multimeter can still just be plugged into a Windows 10 computer and read it. And let's actually take a look real quick at how it works. Okay, so just so you can see how it's working, I just got the Arduino serial monitor open because Putty's giving me a hard time. Uh, but yeah, so we, we open it up in the serial monitor, we get the baud rate set right, and it's actually just sending it in ASCII. So we get the plus or minus sign, the number, the scientific notation, and then what it's measuring. So volts DC. So it's it's literally just sending it in ASCII. There's no binary that we're having to deal with. We don't have to convert it. So it'd actually be really easy to make an app for doing the data logging like this MD fluke uh, that I was using. So uh, making an app that would work with this is kind of trivial, uh, but it's still, it, it's so simple, they, they made the design so simple that we can still use it today um, and get our readings that we want. So I'm very happy with this. Okay, so this is the multimeter that I replaced. So it was a BK Precision 2831C and it is a great multimeter. It didn't have any problems with it at all. Um, main drawback for me with it that made me want to upgrade is it's not auto ranging. So I'd always have to change the range scale on it, uh, which can be difficult to do while I'm recording videos to have to reach up and adjust something while I'm trying to be focused in on the video. Uh, but I also really wanted something that I could show on screen for you guys. So that's the big thing that pushed me to the Fluke 45 was because it has that output. And I know there are newer options that are in a similar price range or even cheaper that I could have used to, to put it on screen. But I do like the uh, secondhand equipment market anyways. Uh, so that's why I went that route. I, I think this multimeter at this price will still give any of those cheaper modern ones a run for their money. So those O1 and Handtech and, and all those cheaper multimeters, uh, this'll, this'll give it a, a run for its money, uh, even though it's 30 years older. So that's why I went that route. And this isn't my first Fluke product. I also have this uh, Fluke 376 that I use out in the field. You don't see it often in videos because it's not great for like the kind of troubleshooting that we do on this channel. Uh, it's normally, you know, for like AC repair and stuff, hence the giant current clamp on it. That one's really not the, the best choice for, for that kind of, uh, for, for this kind of channel, but I do have it. And uh, at work, we use the Fluke 77 handhelds a lot. And I'll probably do a more dedicated video on setting up the software and getting it to play with um, OBS another day. Uh, that way, if anybody else gets something like this and wants to be able to show on YouTube, you know, their repairs that they're doing and actually have the multimeter showing up on screen instead of having to tilt the camera at it, uh, I will do a video on that for anybody that's interested. Uh, well, really more of if anybody's interested. Uh, I may not do the video if nobody's interested in it, but if there's interest, I'll do that. If not, I won't. Uh, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.